Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Mr. Neighbor vs. The World, the show where I test and review everything. Now today I will be talking about the three best and worst things about the game Sifu and a recommendation on whether or not I think it's worth your time. So Sifu is a roguelike style game where you play as a kung fu student who is out to avenge the death of their father. And what makes this game special is that it uses a unique aging death system that is I don't think it's present in any of the games that I've played. Now let's go ahead and start talking about the bad stuff. But first off, I'm gonna have to say the story. It's not all that deep. Yeah. This is a beginning cutscene, and the guy you're playing as Yang, he comes to find this dude Sifu, who was also his master at some point. And he ends up killing him, as you see here. And then this is you, the protagonist. Right now you're playing as the antagonist. He sees that you killed his father, and then the story starts. But you play the game, you keep going, and I guess this is spoilers, but if you know that you have to go kill this guy, you kill him, and then that's kind of it. Aside from this cutscene, there really isn't any sort of development in the story. You don't really know who Sifu was, who this guy is. I mean, this is you're just a kid i guess who had to deal with this traumatic experience but i don't i don't i don't know who anyone is and i guess you know you're avenging the death and that's that's it that's the whole story it's super simple super straightforward and it's not that great next up would have to be the gameplay loop the combat is different i have something else to say about the combat but the gameplay loop it follows a very simple, you hit your combo, they block, you block again, then they open up and you hit your combo again. It's very simple and repetitive. So here, hit three times, they block, they block, then you have to wait for an opening, you hit three times or something, and then you beat them. And it's the same for regular enemies, it's the same for bosses, it's the same for mini bosses. It gets old pretty fast especially once you've beaten all the enemies and all the bosses you know what to expect and this kind of ties into the lack of replayability which is number three on my list and probably the worst thing about this game is it has a cool concept and it's good but the moment you've done a mission and a fight or a whatever once you've done something it's not going to change it's not going to be any different you can play a different difficulty i guess but for the most part if you're paying attention to reaction time, move sets, and just the way enemies fight, it's all gonna be mostly the same. So there isn't very much replayability in this game, which is hard. You know, usually with games, especially if they're gonna be this short, you wanna have some sort of replay value, and you wanna be able to come back to them and play them more than once. But now I want to talk about the good things about the game. And first on my list, first of three, would be the design. They follow a sort of cartoonish drawing comic. I don't exactly know how to explain it, but it's it's a obviously it's a 3D model, but they have this sort of 2D dimension on their characters and on the world, which I like a lot. I've seen this kind of style before, but not a lot of people use it. And I definitely think it it works really well. And secondly, I wanna talk about the concept of the game itself. You know, it has a fighting game style, it's all this, you know, you, you can lose, you die, and you can reset, similar to a lot of other games with story and stuff like that. But the thing about this game, if you see on the top left corner, we're currently age 22, and we have zero deaths. But the thing is, every time you die, the death counter goes up, and however many times you've died, your age also goes up by that much as well. But when you die, you start aging. And so we went up by one and we're now going to be the age 23. And what happens is when you reach age 70, that's your last life basically. You can't revive past the age of 70. And so throughout the missions, Depending on how many times you die, you will start the next section or mission at that age. So you start the beginning of the game age 20. And then as you can see, I went to 21. 
and I jumped up to 28. So depending on the difficulty and how good the person's skill level is, you have to keep going from where you left off. And the thing is, every 10 years, you start with less health, but you do more damage. And aside from the stat changes, your appearance changes as well. You can see your hair starts getting longer, it starts getting more gray, your character starts getting more wrinkles. So you can also see the character age the more times you die, which is a, it's a cool concept. The entire concept and idea behind the gameplay is really cool, and I haven't seen this done anywhere else. And what I would say is best about this game and kind of makes this game worth playing is the combat. I know I mentioned earlier that the gameplay loop is a little repetitive, but learning the combat, seeing the new enemies, getting better at your reaction time, detecting what the enemies are going to do, and seeing different ways to defeat these enemies. You have finishers, there's also they have health bars, and the bar under their health bar, which is a white bar, there's a stagger bar, which when you fill up, that triggers the execute. And if you parry or perfect block enemies, that bar also fills, so there's even the chance for you to for you to execute them without even dealing damage to them. Also in this game, as you see, I've taken damage on the top left. When you defeat enemies, that's how you heal. There aren't healing items like in other games, so you have to rely on your combat abilities and making sure, obviously, you don't want to get hit, but if you do, you have to make sure that you're able to defeat enemies in order to stay alive. And another thing, sometimes you'll be faced with a bunch of enemies at once. And that means you have to be focusing on multiple enemies at the same time and blocking what different people are going to be doing. Some have weapons, others different attack patterns. There's a lot of different things going on. And so you need to be keeping track of everyone, making sure your reaction time is good so that you can be successful at this game. So while the combat is generally straightforward and simple, it has a pretty high skill cap, which I enjoy because there's a lot to learn and it forces you to be better. And with all that being said, who would I recommend this game to? Honestly, people who enjoy difficult games with high skill caps, similar to Souls-like games or other roguelikes, I think they would enjoy this game. It's simple, but it takes a lot of time to really learn and master. However, it is very short and I don't think there's very much replayability in this game. There are challenges to do and other things, but going back to do them, the game doesn't make me want to keep playing. So while I would recommend one playthrough for the people who enjoy difficult games, I would say get it, but only if it's on sale at anywhere between $15 and $20. I don't think it's worth the full $40 price point just due to what it offers. But that's going to be it for us today, neighbors. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more reviews like this. Stay tuned and I'll see you all in the next episode.